so I don't have this one super prepared. Um, I don't have this one super prepared. I'm actually going to go through this with you step by step. And I actually did it intentionally where I basically just said, okay, well, let's, um, let's, let's just make sure that we can uh, do this together. Okay. So suppose you put a thousand dollars into an interest bearing account that yields 5% annually. The word annually means every year. So apparently this thing occur, accrues 5% interest every year. How much interest does it get after the first year? I'm just going to throw that question out there because this is still warm up. Do you guys know? Well, I, I guess, the, okay, I'm asking question one from this thing. Do you know how much interest this thing gets after the first year? Here's the first question. Do you guys know how to turn the percent into a decimal sign? 5% turn into a decimal sign. Do you know how to do that? All right, Rachel, you totally got it. Exactly. Very good. Yes, and Savannah, turning 5% is basically you just move that decimal place two times to the left and you get 0 0.05. Awesome. Which, if you multiply 1,000 times 0 0.05, you get $50. So question two, very similar to that, is how much is in the account at the end of one year? If you get $50 extra from the interest, how much is in the account? 150 or $1,050. Okay, now I guess my other question is, so what you did then is you multiplied um, 1,000 times 0 0.05, and you got 50, right? Is there a number I can multiply 1,000 by to get my answer right off the bat? Because what you did was you multiplied 1,000 times 0 0.05, and you got 50, and then you added that to 1,000. Is there a way I can, is there a number I can multiply that to get 1050 right off the bat? This is kind of that, um, that same question that I burned Elijah on the other day, where we talked about the wit waiter and tipping the waiter and that kind of stuff. If you don't know, say IDK. Um, yes, is Elijah, exactly, 105%. If I were to convert 105% into a decimal, that would be 1.05. Because what I'm doing there is, I mean, that's, that's the, the 0 0.05 accounts for that extra 5%, and then the 1 accounts for the first 1,000 that you put in there in the first place. So it's, a, you know, 1050, that's going to be your answer. Are we cool with that, Elijah? I know it's kind of a simple question, but I mean, what do you mean, ouch? Why are you ouch? Is it ouch because I burned you on that last week? Oh, okay. Well, no, I mean, hey, 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 calm down because, uh, even though I burned you on that last week, at least you didn't forget. Actually, it was just Monday. I burned you on that Monday. But anyway, let's try this. So you leave it in, you don't touch the thing for two years. How much interest do you get? All right. Well, that's point, you know, that's 5% of, you know, whatever's in your account. But this time there's not $1,000 in your account. There's $1,050 in your account. So your answer is 1050 times 1.05. Actually, maybe I should just go 0 0.05. And this would tell me exactly how much interest I got. Or I can go 1050 times 1.05. And this would tell me exactly how much is in my account right now. So the second year, instead of adding $50, they added $52.50. Why? Because I had a little bit more money because I of the interest from the previous year. 
Are we cool with that? Alright, um... I'll tell you what, Kaylin, I'm... I, I haven't gone through too much complicated stuff. All I've been doing, all I went through was uh, question one, two, three, and four. All right, here for part three. Let, let me or part, for part five. What happens after the third year? Okay, let me show you kind of what my my thoughts are. Well, what I could do is I could take this number and multiply it by one point zero five again. And that's the answer I would get. I would get have eleven or one thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars and sixty two sixty three cents in there. They'd probably round that sixty two point or you know I mean uh point six two five cents up to sixty three cents. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Um the the way I got to this number is I said, okay, well, what is it? 1,000 times 1.05. And then I multiplied that by 1.05. And then I multiplied that by 1.05. I could have gotten to that number this way, 1,000 times 1.05, times 1.05, times 1.05. Agreed? Or maybe the most nicely concise way of doing it is I could have done it this way. 1,000 times 1.05 to the third power. Because 1.05 to the third power is 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05 three times. Same answer. Okay. Are we cool with that? So if I were to say, if I were to graph this thing and you were asking to graph this thing, I would probably say, okay, well, it's 1,000 times 1.05 to the x power. You know, it depends on what kind of x you give me. In fact, maybe the easiest, easiest way would be just to ask, ask your uh, graphing calculator to make a table for you. And the table is slow because apparently it didn't update. Or maybe the numbers are too big because those aren't the right numbers. Maybe the easiest way to do it would be 1,000 times 1.05 to the x power, and then ask it for the table. Just type in 1. There we go. See? Look. At the first year, you get 1050. At the second year, you get eleven $1,102.50. And the second, third year, you get this. Fourth year, fifth year, all of that kind of stuff. Are we cool? Which is not bad. Anyway, um, let's move on. So that was warm up. That actually wasn't different from anything that we've done so far. But let's talk about this stuff. Okay. Suppose. $1,000 is deposited, deposited into an interest-bearing account that yields 1% over a certain time period called T. T is not one year, but a fixed time length. Example, like one and a half months or one month. So instead of occurring 5% interest over one year, let's say I occur 1% interest five times a year. Does that make sense to you? Do you guys see where I'm coming at with this? Now, how much interest does the account earn after the first time period? Okay, 
Well, I'll tell you what. Instead of asking all these questions over and over again, I'm just going to change the numbers in my, in my table. Sorry, my computer's freezing a little bit. Come on, Desmos. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, all right, so instead of having to recalculate out all of those things and go through this, I'm just gonna change that increase in 5% to an increase in 1%. Okay, cool. So this is my answer. After the first year, you get $1,010. After the second year, you get $1,010 or $1,020 and one cent. Then $1,030 and three cents. $1,040 and six cents. $1,051 and one cent. I'm sorry. This is 10 cents, 30 cents, 60 cents. This is one cent. Are we cool with that? So I answered actually questions four, five, and six already right off the bat. Four, five, or six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fact, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So let's talk about compound interest. And I'm going to read this one slowly to you. I'm going to be very careful with it as well. Most interest-bearing accounts award interest more frequently than at the end of one year. So I think it'd be kind of a pain if you put money into an account and you had to wait a whole year for it to occur any interest at all. Does that make sense? What I would rather it do is I would rather this thing occur interest maybe quarterly. Like you know how often you get a report card, maybe it occurs interest every, every time it does that. So for example, um, instead of having 6% annually, basically at the end of the year, they'll give you 6%. What most people would rather do is have 6% quarterly, which means a quarter of 6% interest occurs four times a year, which basically means if you put in your money and then what is a quarter of a year? That would be uh, three months. If you put in your money and three months later, you'll get, you won't get a 6% increase, but you'll get one and a half percent increase. Does that make sense? So that way maybe you could spend that extra one and a half percent. Now, here's my question. What is the advantages of that? Do you get more money in the end? If instead of doing 6% at the end of the year, I did one and a half percent four times in the middle of the year. Or is it the same? I mean, it doesn't make a difference. Because one and a half times four is still six. So I mean, it's gonna add up to be the same thing. You guys agree? So, which one would you rather have? I'm being very specific with my words here. Which one would you rather have? Why, Rachel? Is it just because you can get your money quicker? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. Come on, I want you to answer, Rachel. Why? Why? Do you want 1.5 interest? 
Because you don't have to wait, and it isn't 1.5% of the amount, it's 1%. Ah, Rachel, I think you're onto something. See, I'm trying to trick you. Because it would seem that it wouldn't make a difference. The only difference is if you do 6% at the end of the year, and you did 1.5% four times in the year, it would give you the same amount of money. But actually, it doesn't. And I think that's really interesting. Um, because it's, well, I mean, I think it's really interesting and we, you know what, let's explore that. Let's see how much, how much it would work. All right. So if we did a hundred dollars, we deposited a hundred dollars into an account and it yields 6% compounded quarterly after every three months. So basically it means that you're going to increase by uh, 1.5% quarterly. Does that make sense? All right. Every three months, you're going to increase by 1.5%. If they're saying, hey, I'm going to do a 6% uh, annual interest, but it only goes up 1.5% every quarter. So really, I can just change those numbers again to be, all right, so I'm going to put in $100 over here. And instead of 1.01, I'm going to put 1.015. So here's the numbers. After the first three months, I'm going to have, actually, you know what, let's start this graph out at zero. After the first, at zero months, I'm going to have $100 in there. That's how much money I put in to begin with. After the first three months, I'm going to have $101.50. Does that make sense? After the second three months, so this would be the second time interval, which is six months later, I would have $103.02. Are we cool? Yes, no, you can't hear me? All right, after the third set of three months, so what, this is nine months later, this is like a pregnancy later, you'll have $104.57. And after the fourth set of three months, which is what? That's actually one full year, right? Because that's the fourth set, the fourth occurrence of this thing. So after the fourth set of three months, you have $106.14. Now, if we did it where we compounded it annually, how much money would you have in the account? If you put in $100 to begin with, and you compounded it annually at 6%, how much money would you have exactly in that, or yeah, how much money would you have in the account? Come on, people. You'd have $106 because 6% 6 of 100 is exactly 6. So you add those two together and you have $106. So on one side, you'll have $106.14. And on the other side, you just have straight up $106. Now, I know you guys are thinking, dude, that's the difference of 14 cents. What? You know, I don't care. You know what I mean? But I would rather have the 14 cents than not have it. In fact, think about this. What if you compounded it um, more often than that? What if we compounded it 12 times a year? Does that make sense? What if we did this thing 12 times a year? Like every month, it, you know, it, it analyzes how much interest you get and it adds that to your account. So I would just have to say, okay, well, where's, where's 12? Let's go to, let's see where 10 is and then we'll go 12. 
$119.56. Actually, I need to change my formula, do you remember? Because if it's occurring interest at 12 times a year, then what I need to do is it only occurs um, half a percent of interest every time it does that, right? Does that make sense to you? Because 6% divided by 12 is half. So every month it's going to occur half a percent of interest. So let's see what the, the table looks like. At year 12, you're going to get $106.17 versus only having $106. We're actually getting better here. Does that make sense? In fact, in fact, what if we did it even more? I mean, what if we did, instead of doing half of, you know, like, 12 times a year. What if we did it like 48 times a year? So what is 48 times a year? That would be four times a month. That'd be every week, let's say. Or what if we said, okay, well, what is, what is it, what would, what would it do if we did every, every, um, every week it occurs? In fact, let's even do it even crazy. Let's go 365 days. Every day, they analyze the interest and see what the difference is. So let's see what that is. 6 divided by 365 is equal to, come on, 0 0.01643, all right. So it occurs interest at point, let's see, this view, 0, 01634. Okay, not a whole lot of interest. Um, but if I go to 300, and 62. Then it's going to be $106.15. I feel like I'm wrong here. When Sarah's. Zero one six. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that supposed to be a four? Oh, I see. Four, four. Yeah, all right. Four, four. Ah, look. I'm at $106.18 as opposed to doing $106 and... Or just a straight up $106. In fact, here's, here's what I would say. I would go, well, let's not do pennies here. Let's do, like, what is this? One, two, three, two, three. A million dollars. Let's put in a million dollars into this account. Then this is how much money I would have. You would have a million six be one thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars and sixty eight cents versus just having a million and sixty thousand dollars you have the difference is an extra one thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars does that make sense like we're getting pretty good here I would rather have well, here, here, let me ask you this. Would you rather have $1,837 extra in your pocket, or would you rather not? See, I, I totally would. I totally would. I, I, don't, I don't see what the problem is here. Anyway, 
we're kind of getting off topic, but we're kind of not. Um, going back to our original equation. All right, so this is our original equation. We could model that equation a little bit differently. What we could say is um, this, this equation works I'm going to change this. Whoa, 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 what happened? All right, here we go. All right. Here, let me write down this equation. And then while I write down this equation, I gotta actually, right after this, I gotta take a break because I gotta go to the bathroom. Um, but your dollars as a function of capital T is equal to, sorry, computer's frozen just a little bit, give it a second. Dollars as a function of capital T is equal to Come on, computer. All right, here we go. Dollars as a function of capital T is equal to 100 times 1.015 to the capital T. This is the equation for this is the equation for our money. This is how much um, money we would have after every three months. This is going back to the original problem. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So this capital T doesn't represent how many years. This capital T represents how many quarters or how many three months. So if you wanted to put it in terms of years, I would have to say that 4y is equal to, no, no, I'm sorry, 4 times big T is equal to 1 year. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to put this equation in terms of this, Oh, no, no, I should probably put a Y. Oh, wait, wait. Here's what I'm going to do. If you were to ask me, well, what if T represented years? Okay. Or not, maybe Y represent years. It would be 100 times 1.05 times 4T, the capital T. 4T being the number of quarters that you're talking about. Does that make sense? Now let me see, let me see, actually I think I got this wrong to be honest with you. I totally got this wrong. It needs to be this. One fourth times t. Does that make sense? I feel like I feel like I might be doing this wrong. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Hold on one second. Um Okay, let's see. This would be if I plugged in
Yeah, this is how much money I would make per year. You take the number of T, the number of quarters, and you divide it by four. All right, I, I think I can hang with that. So, what we could do is we could regroup this. And there's a, there is a formula that says x to the a times b is equal to x to the a to the b. That's in exponential formulas. That's the first thing I showed you, or that was from Expo 1. We're in Expo 5 now. So really I could regroup this as 100 times 1.05 to the 1 fourth power times t. So 1.05 to the 1 fourth power, 1.05 to the one fourth power. Oh, dude, my calculator's broken. Oh, wait, I want to go to scientific. 1.05 to the one divided by four. 1.01227. So this would be 100 times 1.01227 times t. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I kind of think it makes sense. It makes sense to me. All right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to put it on pause. I'm going to stop the video. Can I take maybe a 10 minute break? Let's see.